All right. The um, one of my colleagues is going to introduce the next moderator, and because I want you to know who that colleague is, I'm going to introduce her, even though that's a lot of introduction. But she deserves a major introduction. Uh, Sophie Egan is a director of programs here. She does the Menus of Change program for you who go for those of you who. Um, uh, have been or will be going and joining us in June. So don't miss it. She does an amazing job crafting that program. She does a lot around our other sustainability and uh, nutrition-driven program, health and wellness-driven program. She's also the author of the book Devoured, um, which was out in, in hardcover last year, is coming out in paperback, so make sure you get a copy. We do have some at the bookstore. So without further ado, the CIA's great Sophie Egan. Good afternoon. I know many of you in the audience. Thank you, Anne. That was very kind. I play stage manager for this uh, amazing program. So uh, this afternoon, I'm breaking out of my cave in order to uh, tell you about the extraordinary moderator for this session. So uh, for just making sure we're in the right place, this is the uh, session entitled A Focus on Seafood, Flavors of Panama and the Virgin Islands. So we're all going to take a little mental vacation for the next hour. Um, not that it's rough living here in the Napa Valley, that is. Uh, but our fearless leader for this session is the inestimable Jody Eddy. Um, some of you might have met her in an earlier breakout session, but for those of you who didn't, Jody is a journalist and cookbook author. She has cooked at uh, Jean Georges, The Fat Duck, and Tabla, and is the former executive editor of Art Culinaire. She is the author of the books Cuba, uh, Recipes and Stories from a Cuba Kitchen, the ICP Judges uh, Choice Award recipient North, the Nord New Nordic Cuisine of Iceland. As you can see, she's familiar with various parts of the world. Um, as well as the James Beard nominated Come In, We're Closed, an invitation to staff meals at the world's best restaurants. Uh, she has another cookbook set in Iceland, uh, published by Ten Speed this year. And in addition to all of that, uh, Jody leads culinary tours for executives. She's a recipe developer for various large scale food and beverage companies. She's consulted on food sovereignty issues for NGOs, and she organizes the Roots Conference at the Chef's Garden each year. She's currently producing a television show focused on the meaning of food for a major network. That's as much as I can tell you. Uh, please give a warm welcome for Jody Eddy. Just a shout out, um, if you don't have Sophie's book, definitely pick it up, it's amazing. Um, so I'm really thrilled today to welcome two really extraordinary chefs as we explore the seafood traditions of Panama and the Virgin Islands. Um, our first chef presenter, um, I was privileged enough to present at a conference at her restaurant, St. Francis Cafe and Market in Panama City last fall. Um, it's an incredible place. It's not only a restaurant, it's really, I think I would equate it to almost a culinary think tank for Panamanians. Um, Elena Hernandez is an extraordinary person. And if you haven't been to Panama, definitely go and definitely partner up. Um, with Elena. <laughs> um, so she's also the founder of Panama Gastronomica, um, which is the premier culinary conference in Panama. So again, if you're going, go at that time. Um, she's a graduate of Le Cordon Bleu, and she founded the first cooking school in Panama. She's also a published author. And she was actually my translator at her conference, so I feel like she had to do a lot more heavy lifting than I'll have to do today, but please join me in welcoming amazing Elena Hernandez. Thank you. <laughs> Where is everybody? Everybody went, they're sleeping, or are they went to the hotel? For... 
Okay, so um, we're going to do two recipes um, on this uh, workshop on seafood. And I wanted to show the first yes. uh, slide Absolutely. on my presentation, and then you can see the rest of the <laughs> photos. The first slide is a map of Panama. And as you can see, Panama is located in um, the middle of North and South America. It's an isthmus. Actually, many people think that we are Central America, but we don't consider ourselves mm -hmm. Central America. We consider that we are an isthmus independent. Panama and Central America, because mm -hmm. we don't have many cultural things that are in common with Central America. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm not going to ma make any jokes like this morning because I don't have much time now. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. But um, So the name Panama means, in, in, in Indian dialect, it means abundance of fish. Mm. Also means abundance of um, butterflies. But, mm. So it's natural. We are surrounded by oceans. Uh, we have the Pacific Ocean on one side the Atlantic or the Caribbean Ocean on the other side. It's only an hour away by car from one, in, uh, from one side to the other. And today what I'm going to do is concentrate on the Caribbean side. Why? Because um, this um, region, which uh, goes from Bocas del Toro, you can see next to Costa Rica, and to all the other um, end where it says Cunayala, that's the San Blas Islands. We're going to be doing a dish from the San Blas um, Indians called the Guna Yalas, okay. and we're going to be doing a dish uh, from Colón, which is the Afro-Caribbean side of um, Panama, all along the coast up to Bocas del Toro. And why? Because um, all these um, Afro-Antillians who migrated to Panama during the construction of the railroad and the construction of the Panama Canal, mm -hmm. many of them that came first from Africa as slaves during the con conquest, the Spanish conquest, and then uh, for the construction of the, these two um, railroad and Panama Canal where they settled in Panama. The, this second migration came from the islands, mainly from Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad and Tobago. So we have a lot in our food. Is um, The, the um, flavors are from uh, coconut that you're going to see in these two recipes that I'm going to make. Coconut, I'm sure that um, you also have that. <laughs> Coconut, plantains, curry, fish, of course, seafood, and a lot of tubers. Okay, Can so you just quickly tell us what are the major um, fish, shellfish in Panama? Yes, just and you can actually go ahead and, and show the other, because we have <laughs> some photos that were lended to me by some really great photographers. Mm -hmm. and one of them is my uncle, mm -hmm. who um, he, his hobby is photography, so he, um, my cousin is here with me, and... She came with me, and she's my, my driver in Napa. <laughs> so I can drink wine, and she drives. <laughs> Not really. So um, uh, we have our main uh, fish, the most uh, known, comes from the Pacific, and it's corvina, or the sea bass. The, it's the white sea bass. Um, and then uh, shrimp. Uh, we are very famous for our shrimp. Uh, you can find on both sides. But it, uh, the best ones are exported to mm. Japan, the United States, mm. lobster. We have the crab. Uh, I think it's the uh, king, not king crab, the spider crab, uh, centollo, which is uh, on the, from the Caribbean. Mm. And then we also have mero, which is a grouper. Mm. Um, in the mountains, we have trout. Mm. Um, what else? Many, I mean, like yeah. mackerel. We have uh, mackerel is mostly used for these dishes that we're going to do today, but we didn't find mackerel here, so I had to, do, to use red snapper, which is also uh, very well um, used in Panama. Okay, let's start because I only have 20 minutes. Okay, we're going to do two dishes. One is a fish soup uh, from the Kuna Indians, and if you're going to see the Kuna Indians uh, picture of them. They come from the islands of San Blas. It's an archipelago of 365 small islands. It's located in the Caribbean next to Colombia. Part of that archipelago goes into Colombia. And some Colombians, they claim that the Indians are Colombian, but they're not. Mm. They are from Panama. Mm. Um, and they actually have their own uh, government. Um, they have seats in the parliament. Mm. They have uh, caciques. ¿Cómo se dice caciques en inglés? The chief, like the Indian chief, um, they have their, we have eight Indian tribes in Panama. They're, they're native, native. Uh, um, they, they dressed with their 
uh, typical dresses. Um, and this uh, soup, that's the, the San Blas Islands there. This soup is called Tule Masi, and it means the food of the Kunas. And um, we're going to do, we're going to start this food, uh, this soup. It's based with coconut milk. The coconut milk that um, ideally we want to use would be a coconut milk from the coconut, like uh, you probably did. I was lazy to do that, but uh, they, I got coconut milk from Thailand. And so uh, you just shred it, and then you put it. You can put it in a blender, and put some water, and then you know strain it, and you get the coconut milk. Um, if, if you don't have a blender, then you can use a can like me. But this is very thick. Uh, this is a very thick. Uh, I had problems with this. Uh, Coconut milk, so but it doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna start <laughs> we're gonna here. We're, we're gonna start first. Sorry, coconut oil. Can you see this here? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we're gonna do an octopus on this pot, so it's boiling water. Okay, we're gonna heat some coconut oil, and we're gonna. Doo -doo. Thank God I have a spoon here. Okay, <laughs> onions. Just a bit of onions. Um. Garlic. Garlic. Garlic, onions, a little bit of peppers. I mean, like I said this morning, I became a professional ingredient smuggler. Somebody put it on Twitter and I was like, oh, oh my no. God, now they're going to catch me. <laughs> Somebody who was here this morning actually put on Twitter that I am a professional smuggler. So <laughs> I guess that next time I come into the US, they're going to have like a picture of me. So this is the criollo peppers. They're not spicy. They're sweet. Uh, it's part of our, like our DNA of our flavors along with the culantro. You use culantro too, right? Okay. Uh, happy. I, I also smuggled culantro just to find that there was lots here, so that's good. <laughs> so now you can, you know, reproduce this this recipes very easily. But um, if you don't have these, if you can't find them, which you will probably not, you can use any sweet bell, uh, be peppers, no problem. Okay. So we're gonna use like the sweet bell peppers that you gave me. We're gonna do like a fast version of this because you know it's, this is TV and we don't have much time. <laughs> Coconut milk, because I think it's very, very thick. Ideally, I, I could put some fish stock just to make it thinner, or water, doesn't matter. And we're gonna cook here in this, in this um, in this uh, pot with the coconut milk, we are going to cook the tubers, okay? We have a, uh, Squash. This I smuggled too. <laughs> this is a otoe or a taro root, but it's actually malanga, but a pink malanga. This is nyame. I, I asked for jam and they gave me the sweet potato, but actually this is a nyame. It's a, how do you say it in English? Uh, nyame. It's like a, well, like I said before, we call it dashi. Okay. That's what it's called on the other island. But it's like a okay. yam, a white yam. So you use any two words that, don't use potatoes because that wouldn't be like really authentic but any tuber that you can find. Yuca is good too. Um, I got some yuca here. I got some nyame. I'm gonna put one piece for this demo. And then also platanos, um, plantains, green plantains, okay? So they're gonna go there and we're gonna cook them in this coconut milk. We're gonna add a bit, little bit of salt. This salt is like crystal salt, wow. Hey, I hope it's salt. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're gonna get that going. Also, for the re recipe, you know, the the this is a um, soup that they make. The woman makes the, this food, and we usually use like a fish steak. You know, you get the red snapper or the mackerel, and you cut it like in with the bone in. But they gave me a fillet because we are at CIA, so <laughs> no bones. So this, if I cook in there for a long time. It will um, break. Mm. Are you saying break? Like fall apart? Mm. So I just uh, put a little bit of flour and fried it before so it will have texture mm. and won't break, okay? 
So I'm going to put that in there once a few minutes have gone by and the tubers are cooked. And then we're going to add, if the family is, you know, if the family, uh, they're like the professional, they're earning a good salary, they can use lobster. So we're going to use this baby, half a tail of lobster and some shrimp. If they don't have a good salary, then they would probably just use the fish. Okay? So it depends on how much you can afford. In the meanwhile, we're going to do a second recipe. So we're going to cook that there. We're going to put this down. Okay. The second recipe is octopus, also in coconut milk. This is an uh, African Panamanian, Afro Panamanian uh, recipe. Okay? Which what is, would the African influences be in this dish? Sorry? The African influences in this dish. It's very, we are 56%. Yep. Africa, uh, pro Panamanian. And so the ingredients um, yes, that yes. are coming from but Africa yes. in this dish would be? In this dish? Yeah. Coconut milk, mm -hmm. curry, mm -hmm. ginger. Right. Right. We're going to try this octopus. We're going to try tomorrow at the market right. place. Marketplace? Mm -hmm. World marketplace? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how many of you know how to cook octopus? Or do you want to learn how to cook? I can skip this. You want to learn? Okay, cool. <laughs> I have one already cooked because we don't have much time, but okay, trick here, we're going to put some uh, boiling water, salt, and special secret for this Afro-Panamanian recipe, not for all the octopus, it's red food coloring to give it color, okay? So we're going to, this is edible red food coloring, don't use the, your child's temp tempera paints or anything like that, just, you know, drops, a few drops there. and. The thing is the octopus, <clears throat> if you don't know how to cook it, it can be really chewy, you know. So what, what we do is first, it, has to, it needs to be very cold, okay. We're going to do a, um, this, we're going to go in here for five minutes, okay. And then we're going to take it out and put it in ice water. We're going to pretend that five minutes went by. <laughs> Which is not true. And we're gonna, it's going to contract. See? Mm. And put it here for two minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we come <laughs> back and put it here. Okay? For another five minutes. Mm. And then two minutes, you're going to repeat this for three times. Mm. And then you're going to end it here for 40 to 45 minutes. And it's going to be tender. Mm. Okay? Some people used to put a copper coin in the water. So this red food coloring will do more or less the same effect, okay? Give it a little bit of co color. Because the octopus really, it's not really red, it's like a, like a, a dirty, uh, muddy, red, dirty red. I don't like the color very much, but okay. So that we're gonna, I'm gonna take it out because really I already have an octopus for you here. I'm gonna cook this, sorry? Yeah, you do repeat this process three times. It's going to break the fiber of the octopus. Yes. It's going to break down, break down the collagen. Then you're going to get this guy here, like this, okay? And we're going to cut for this recipe. We're not going to use the head, okay? And we're going to cut. See, it's very, very tender. I can't break it with my hands. If it were hard, you couldn't do this. It would be really chewy, but this is really, really tender. And uh, what we're going to do is a stew with my other... I feel like I'm running out of time very fast. So I'm going to put the accelerator on. <laughs> Step on the accelerator. Can, can, let me see if I can have somebody take this pot of water away from here. That, this isn't... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, more coconut oil. You can do it, uh, you know, how to do coconut oil. You just take the coconut, the milk, coconut milk and reduce it. Reduce it until it becomes oil. Or you can buy the coconut oil, which is much better for us here. We're going to saute some onions, ginger, garlic, and the habanero. These are hot. And these I also smuggled in here. 
But you didn't. But hear you it can't here. get them here. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't hear it here. No. No. <laughs> See, this is the ones that I got from here, and this is the ones that I brought home. They're very similar. Okay. So, don't no jalapenos. That's not Panamanian. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give you your thing back. Okay. So we're gonna. This is very easy to do. We're gonna saute onions. Where's my? Okay. Here you go. Onions. There's lots of onions here. Garlic. Ginger. And peppers. Saute that and add a bit of ají chombo or the habanero peppers. Just a little bit because it's really hot. Okay, sorry, but I need to go back to um, this recipe here. This is the thing about... Okay. So now we're going to do fish. Where is the fish? Here. I'm going to do the shrimp first and the lobster. Here. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more water. It's very thick, this milk here. Ours is not as thick. Okay. I'm going to keep that here. We're going to add a bit of salt in this um, preparation. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. Now, here, we're going to add the octopus. We're going to cut it up into small pieces. We're just going to do a little bit here for the demo. And for this, we're going to serve it with um, coconut rice. You have the, they get the recipes? Yes. Everybody gets yep. the recipes? They're on okay. the app. Yeah. We're going to do um, coconut rice, which is basically, you use rice, white rice, long grain rice, and you're going to use the coconut water, I mean the coconut milk, as if it were the same measurement as water, like one cup of rice, two cups of coconut milk. And then always add a little bit of sugar. Okay, this octopus is already cooked, so we're going to add a little bit of curry powder in here. Salt, sugar, a bit of sugar, okay. and guess what? Coconut milk. <laughs> See how thick it is? It's very thick. No, no me gusta mucho. Okay. So this is, um, if you come to Panama, this is something that you might eat if you go to like the beach in the, Car mm -hmm. the Caribbean side, the pulpo con leche de coco. Okay, it's gonna take about eight minutes to cook um, the lobster tail, and I put the shrimp in there. I'm gonna put my fish in here too. Remember, the fish is cooked, so I don't want to overcook it or it will fall apart. Yes, okay. This is very easy. They actually don't use any salt in their food, which is really healthy. No low uh, blood pressure, no high blood pressure. That's good. Okay. This um, this is ready, and we are going to serve that here. If I had like an empty coconut, I would yeah. serve it there. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Should we serve it here? <laughs> huh? Okay. Let's see. I cannot plate it here. I need to plate it. It's going to fall from here. But that's, okay, let's see. I need some spoons that they gave me around here. Yeah, I got it. Oh, you got a big spoon. See? Thank you. Okay. It smells amazing on the stage. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. 
So any questions for Elena at this point? Okay. I'm going to put a little bit more here. We do have some coconut rice already made because we only have limited time here. So the coconut rice is here. This is a this is not a coconut. It's a kabash uh, totuma. Comes from a like a kind of squash fruit, and they um, do this. You know what they call totumas, and bef uh, the Indians, they put this in their head, and their mamas they cut the hair. Oh. <laughs> so they have like this. Have you seen it? Yeah. And it's called the totuma hair. Hmm. And when my brothers were small, my <laughs> mother used to do that to them. And they wow. got really bullied at, uh, bullied at school, <laughs> like the corte de totuma. And the other day, yeah, my, my brothers are 48 and 45 now. It's like, the other day I found a photo of them when they were little with the corte de totuma. That's blackmail material. <laughs> yes. That was really mean of me, you know. Okay, this is ready too. I'm just going to put this up. Okay. Um, we're going to serve this here. So I got a mess here. Trying to do a, I'm ne this is like a challenge, worse than my challenge. Like I do a competition called the All Star Chef Challenge in Panama. Mm. This is worse. Like trying to cook <laughs> all this food. Wise, this countdown. Yeah. Okay, we're going to serve this coconut rice in the totuma, which mm. is not going to be used for a haircut, but just for serving here. Okay, and, uh oh, I'm gonna take this mess over here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, okay, so th this is the totuma where we're gonna eat the tulemasi or the soup. We need, uh, did I forget anything? I'm, I feel like I forgot something from my, no, I <laughs> actually put everything in there. Okay, forgot the herbs, but. Okay, we're gonna serve one here. Maybe the mm, smells really good. So I do have a fish spatula here. We're gonna take the fish out. Do you like the photos yeah. that I showed you? The photos, they're beautiful. We have a fish market. It's being renovated right now in the city. Did you go, Jody, to the yeah. fish market? Yes. It's really cool. Yeah. But right now it's being renovated, so we're really happy about it because, you know, it's very warm in Panama. It's, mm -hmm. Last week it was around um, 97, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard to keep a fish market in the city mm. with sometimes broken air conditioning. Mm. Yeah. So um, it's been renovated now. Okay, I got a piece of everything. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> very important. I wanted to serve this in my original totuma that I brought all the way from Panama. Here is a spoon mm. to serve this. Beautiful. Okay. But this, you know this? Tostones, the plantains. Okay, I also smuggled these from Panama. <laughs> I had my staff do them, uh, like, Can you cook you give them a twice. Quick, um, just preparation. Yes. Of... You have the platanos, the green platanos. You fry them like this. Fry them, and then you take them out and you crush them. You can use, uh, not crush them, but like you press them and they yeah. become like this. And then you fry them again. Mm -hmm. So I did the first cooking and I vacuum packed them and I brought them and I just fried them about you know, half an hour ago Great. here. So they're like really fresh. Mm -hmm. um, they were been sitting in my hotel room refrigerator. <laughs> so don't worry that it's, it, it is fresh, okay? <laughs> this will be served like this with a octopus. Beautiful. Oh, look at you. One second left and done. <laughs> Miracle worker. <laughs>
Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Elena. Any questions? Yeah, any questions for Elena? Feel right. free to ask me if you see me in the hallway. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. So I'm, I'm really pleased to introduce um, Digby Strideiron. I met him yesterday and was so in, inspired by our 15-minute conversation, and it's just a thrill to be here on the stage with you. Um, so Digby grew up in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands, and um, there was seafood right outside his door. That's what he grew up um, accessing. And um, so his cooking style is kind of an amalgamation of a contemporary avant-garde style and tried and true techniques um, that have been practiced for generations. He was the first chef to host a James Beard Award dinner in the Virgin Islands and was named CTO's Caribbean Chef of the Year in 2014. Um, he, so you're set to open um, Balter. Open. You're open. <laughs> a contemporary West I Indian I uh, just made a one <laughs> <laughs> kitchen in downtown St. Croix. Um, and he's working right now um, doing some really fascinating work with the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And if you could just tell us briefly yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about this work. It's really cool. incredible. Yeah, man. How's everyone doing today? Everyone's good? <laughs> cool, cool. Um, I'm really excited today. I came all the way from St. Croix to talk mm -hmm. about why I cook. So, and I'm at CIA, it's probably the, the best culinary institute in the world. So I'm a little bit nervous if I trip on some words. And I drank a lot of coffee because I wanted to make sure I had the excitement for you guys, right? Cool. So I'm born and raised in the Virgin Islands, like she said. Um, right now, Balter has been open for one year. And it's the first kind of project that, of that kind that's been done in the Caribbean so far. So pretty much everything is locally sourced. And we try to go based off of seasonal ingredients and regional recipes. To me, it's important because I, I grew up in St. Croix. And as a chef growing up in St. Croix, I can't tell you how many times I learned how to make pasta primavera, I learned how to make spaghetti, I learned how to make everything else except what my mom was making. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I had the opportunity to step on my own, I really wanted to focus on what was indigenous and what is the Caribbean? Is the Caribbean, a, is, what, is that where I live? Or do I live in the West Indies and the Caribbean is a place that people come to visit? Because you s start to really realize there's a difference in the way the food is, the people, and just the whole broad scale of everything, right? So, I got this going. Can I, I'm gonna show you guys something real quick before we start, because it takes a little while. This right here, is uh, coconut water, because I'm gonna make coconut milk from scratch, right? So traditionally what you do is you heat up your water and you take the meat out of the coconut and you heat it up and then you puree it, right? Uh, but we're chefs, so we gotta do something a little bit better, right? So what we did is we roasted all the shells because sustainability is really important to me. I do not like to throw anything away. And please feel free throughout the entire 24 minutes that we got here, ask questions, let's talk, let's get to know each other. I'm cool with that, okay? So uh, we got this going, I'm gonna throw this meat in here. Well, so you got shrimp shells in here. After we uh, got the stock going, we finished it with some uh, cacao. And what's really cool too is, you know, she's coming from Panama, right? And I'm all the way in the Virgin Islands. And the Virgin Islands is a very different background. Uh, for over 250 years, we were owned by Denmark. And we just had our centennial as Americans a year ago. So what's really cool to know about is the food we're about to cook, it's American cuisine, you know? And I'm very proud about that. Um, so we got that going. Can you guys see in here? Oh, yeah, there you go. So we got that little jumble going. And because it was pureed so fine, I don't need to let it go crazy. I don't want to break, break down all that flavor, right? I'm going to let that sit because I want to put it in the Vitamix. But everybody knows if I put that in the Vitamix hot, it's going to go everywhere. Cool. Everybody knows where Nato is? Great. I'm going to talk to you guys about the Taino Indians now. So pre-Columbus, the Taino Indians were on St. Croix. So everybody knows like the word barbecue? That's a Taino word. It came from the word barbacoa. Anybody familiar with the word jerk? That's like Jamaican cooking, right? Actually, that's a Taino word, and it means to be smoked underground. So when you realize what was happening in that time period, you know the Indians were already gone into the bushes because of what happened. They said the Tainos were extinct, but we all know that's not true. We have a whole island full in Puerto Rico. All right? Cool. So anato, this grows all over the islands. You guys can see this? Yeah. Boom, boom. There we go, right here. It's these little seeds. And uh, basically, that's what they would use for like their war paint. When you see all the colors of the Kalinago tribe, which the Kalinago tribe is what they were called as the Caribs. And then you have the Tainos, which were more on my side of the island, right? So they would take these and they make war paint. They kind of fix things up, paint things all over. Pretty awesome. We use it in the culinary world. So when you look at a lot of the cuisine from Puerto Rico, you see those beautiful red hues in the rice. That's the natto. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make that. Today, we're gonna make it a little different though. Traditionally, you just use oil. 
But as chefs, we always want to push the standard, right? So we're going to use some coconut oil. Boom. Put that right there. And we're going to get those annatas in here. It's that fast. It's pretty simple. And it's one of those things you just let it go. Once it starts laying out that hue, it just, the more it steeps in there, the more beauty you're going to get to it. And when you give it a couple minutes, you get a sauce that looks like this right here. You guys see that right now? Oh, right here. See that sauce? See so you get that nice, beautiful color. Oh, we're going to put that aside and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. So those are two things I want to start early because they take a little while, right? Cool. Oh. How long will the seeds steep before you get that color? I'm, I'm going to let them chill in there for about at least another good five minutes. Okay. After a while, they start turning dark. And if it goes too far dark, you know, it's going to get that burnt taste. You don't want that bitterness in your food, right? So we'll keep an eye on it still. Cool. So now let's make some coconut milk. Everybody know what a vital prep is, right? Everyone should have one. It's like the only thing you should have. It's like a standard in every kitchen right now. Boom, boom, boom. So one of the cool things about being a Crucian, which is somebody from St. Croix is a Crucian, uh, is that we, were, we had seven flags between 1492 and where we're at right now. So between the Knights of Malta, uh, the Spaniards, the French, the, um, the Dutch, Denmark predominantly, now America. I mean, it's a really cool thing, but for me, we always remember it was eight, right? Because the Tainos were there first. So a lot of the food that you see in Puerto Rico cuisine, everybody, anybody's heard about Alcapuria? I served it last night. That is Taino food. That was straight the same way they were making it because yuca was their staple starch. And they would do so many beautiful things with yuca. They would take it and they would juice it and they would, it would do some good and bad things. So everybody knows yuca, the juice has cyanide, so it's a, it's a form of poison, right? So if they didn't like somebody, they would actually give them a drink of that, you know? <laughs> but they would actually reduce that, and they would reduce it in a tin, almost like how you make molasses. And then they get this real beautiful sauce that's nothing but yuca juice, but it has that consistency of almost like a Bordelaise or a Demi, and it's just beautiful. And for, when, when, for the restaurant, it's easy to serve something, like a vegan something that's really delicious. Let's get back over here. So I'm going to start off really slow because I know for a fact it's hot. And I don't want to burn myself up. Release some of that steam out. Most kitchens, we never have these. We always use these. So I'm assuming you more comfortable. And voila, we have coconut milk. <laughs> So for me at the restaurant, I don't really buy from the can because I try to do everything from scratch. I have that crazy bug that a lot of chefs have where I like to go out, I source my ingredients, and I don't really consider myself farm to table because my food is based on the relationships of the people that I have around me. So right now my food is starting to go very grilled because one of my cooks makes charcoal. And that's to me so exciting when we have to work together on these dishes like that, you know? So coconut milk made easy. Cool. Awesome. So one of the cool things about my cuisine and what I'm trying to do is I'm taking old school to next techniques and I'm grabbing things that I, that, that from people who came into St. Croix, through the diaspora or however they came there, right? So the French was there. So I do a lot of French techniques, but you don't see Italian in my food. You don't see Chinese in my food or any of those other, because they never came. And for me, it would not be authentic. I would not be true. I would not be honest. And if you cannot be honest with food, then why are you cooking? What's the purpose of it, right? Cool. So now we have this beautiful stock. What I did at this point is I made a, everybody knows how to make a velout, right? All right, so a velout basically is what this became. It's, everybody knows what a roux is? All right, so we made a roux. We used a little bit of cassava flour and regular flour, and then we used coconut oil again. If you realize we're not using the canola oils, you're not seeing olive oil, you're not seeing things that don't belong to me. For me, I want to highlight the culture, the people that are there, right? Cool. So what we did with this is we got the velouté going, and all we did is added some herbs, some curry leaves, and uh, some mirepoix, or what I call sofrito pois. What I do the exact same way you would approach mirepoix, I do the exact same thing, but with sofrito. With sofrito, we have the recao, we have uh, aji dulces, and all those beautiful flavors. So what I, tell you, I do is I cut them up all beautiful, the same way the French cut their mirepoix, and I just put that to my, to my ingredients now. Cool. How's everybody doing so far? We good? All right, so we got a really good like sauce right here from the coconut, right? Cool. Everybody seen these shrimps though? 
May I see them? These things are beautiful. Just take the transfer. Right okay. Yeah. Everybody like those? So these are U5s, which means like five to a pound. Uh, it's a pretty big boy, right? Awesome. So basically what we're going to do is, uh, and this was a last minute thing we changed up in like the last two hours. Anybody seen those Jasper grills outside? <laughs> okay, they're pretty cool. And for me, I have a, a big affection and love for fire. To me, that's the reason why I cook. When you, if you ask me why I cook, it's fire. Fire from the beginning of time brought people together. From the beginning of time, if, if this was 400 years ago, it doesn't matter what part of the world you were at, people were getting together to have supper. It was the most important part of the day, and still to this day and time, it's the most important part of the day. Cool. So we got that, but don't take it off before we use a little too much. Oh, I'm gonna put him off on the side. We're gonna start getting this frying oil ready too. We're gonna have some fun. Um, and like she had over here a lot of those root vegetables, I feel the same way about them too. So you're gonna see a lot of the same ingredients that she used. I'm using it too. And we've never had a conversation about this either. This is just the, the ingredients that we have, but you're gonna realize how different we both approach things. Cool? So what we're gonna do is gonna get these shrimps. I clean them up, we got time. Boom. So for me, I like to leave the head on, right? You guys know why the head is so awesome? All those juices and stuff? Cool. So this dish I'm really, really excited about. There we go. Boom. So you got the nice, beautiful prawn. You like a bowl? Boom, boom. Okay, we're gonna make sure it's like a bowl right here. Cool. This will be your final product. So we're gonna take this right here. We got some harissa. You know why? Everybody know where harissa comes from? The diaspora. To me, and this is, I mean, I'm not gonna call it opinion, but I really believe it's very strong with a lot of other people. But I feel one of the most important things to happen to American cuisine was the diaspora. When you look at a lot of the different places throughout America, throughout the Caribbean, throughout even South America, what you're seeing is a relationship between indigenous people and the people that came through, which were mostly West Africa, right? So when you're looking at things like Kalalu, anybody know what Kalalu soup is? It's like a staple in the Caribbean, right? But then when I'm in like, when I'm in Santo Domingo, they're calling it modongo. And I see the same concept in Puerto Rico, but it's called mofongo. And then when I go down to other islands, they call it cuckoo. And then I was in Curaçao, they call cuckoo the original dish that you find when you go all the way back to Africa. But guess what? They landed in America, and what did they call it? Gumbo. What does gumbo mean? Gumbo actually means okra in Accra language, which was Ghana. I, I, I just, I have a thing for history, so I just want to bring that up, right? So cool. So we got some harissa. And harissa is beautiful. It's a beautiful spice, and what I love about it is that it bleeds out into the food. You know, some things you heat it up and it's gonna be on the shrimp and the shrimp is hot and that's beautiful. But for this dish, what we're doing, we have a nice velout. And what I want is as the dish sits together in the plate, you start to create flavors. So you're gonna taste the velout. I want you to taste the shrimp and I want you to taste the sauce that happens when the shrimp and the velout start coming together. To me, that's what makes things interesting, right? So we're gonna put some of that in there. Spice. Spice was probably one of the most important things that happened to, that, to the tray. You know, when you think about for the first time in the world, all spices being sent to the other half and fennels coming to the Caribbean, sugars coming out of St. Thomas. Like, to me, that's so exciting. So right here, we got some fennel. I got some cor coriander. I got some allspice. And I got something I'm going to throw. I got a left. I got a little hitter I'm going to throw for you guys. I got cardamom in here. Anybody want to know why I use cardamom? And before Columbus, I'm saying about 400 years before, you're gonna find when you go to Puerto Rico, you f my teacher's name was Nahib Suet. There was a big colonization of people that came from the, from the Lebanese that came over in, uh, in the early hundreds. Yeah, sorry about that. So cardamom became like a big spice that we use a lot in our food. And one of the big things to St. Croix is called pound seasoning. And I, I can already understand how that came about. You know, when you're at the market and, and you hey, how do you make this? Well, everybody know how grandmas are talk. Well, you take a pound of this, and you take a pinch of that, and then you take a pound of that, and you put it together. And what you realize is every household had their own. And it was the more similarities that you found was based on the people and where they came from. You see the pound season when I go to Tortola is totally different from the pound season that I use. So for me, when I do pound season, I have to have uh, green cardamom, like it's a staple. Cool? Awesome. So that, and then we have this annatto oil, right? So we're gonna get some of that in there too. And the annatto has that coconut flavor in there, right? Cool. So I'm gonna tell you about this part right here. We were cleaning out the coconuts and uh, they made this really cool contraption, these guys over here, and they started like getting a drill and we got all that good farce out, right? But 
Are we going to throw this away? Is that really what we're going to do? No, oh, man. We're going to reuse this. So we got this idea. So what we did is we, we put a hole, right? We got the shrimp marinated. We'll get this one out of here now. Fourteen. Cool. So we got the shrimps marinated, some harissa, the oil. Uh, put a little serrano in there, right? Serrano's is good. We got some herbs. We're good? Awesome. So we got the coconut in here. The meat's full of the oils. So that's, that's what we're going to go for for flavor right now. I want all that juice, yo. I'm not wasting nothing. Even if it's a demo, I'm not wasting it. <laughs> it up there. Have anybody been to the Virgin Islands? Good, good. If you guys do want to go down, it's a great time. Check out VI Nice. We're paying, they're paying $300 right now if you guys come down and visit us. And if you guys come down and visit, shoot me an email so you come at my restaurant and eat, please. Yeah? Oh, for real? Yeah, I got to shake your hand real quick. Sorry. That is awesome. It's a pleasure. I'm sorry. That's awesome. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That is cool, man. This is such a small world. I love it. I'm excited even more now, man. Yes. Cool. So uh, we got this in here, right? So we got oil in there. A lot of oil. Why? Because I want to do a slight confit to it. Because it's only going to go into that Jasper oven for maybe four to five minutes. So what we did is we had this in here and we smoked it. And what we ended up getting after five minutes of smoking this is this right here. Can you guys see that? I got extras. Did I pass this around? I got yeah, extras. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Smell this, touch it. Yeah. Oh. I got two of them. Because we're only going to plate one. So I'm, I don't want to be cheap. I want you guys to smell this, touch this, taste this. It's beautiful. Well, you probably want to taste it and make a mess. <laughs> it was good? I should have had some earlier. I was making it. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, yeah, stay away, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we're all good. So we got these shrimps that they look great, right? We're going to do something with that. We made this beautiful sauce, right? And, and, and we're going to have all recipes for this stuff, too. So don't worry. I can get that to you. It's no problem at all. All right, so now we're going to get a little inventive, right? So when I made that, that sauce before with the velout, I had this sauce. And it's beautiful. What am I going to do with it, too, right? I got these local vegetables. So what I did is a McQueen method that I, I apply a lot to, like, wahoo and fish where I would poach it in an aromatic broth for a couple of seconds, maybe 15 seconds, and all I want to do is create a pellicle on the fish. And I take the same exact liquid and I have it cold. So I take it and I shock it back in there and I marinate it overnight, right? And I call that the McQueen method, right? But we applied it to vegetables. So we took that aromatic shrimp broth that had all those spices and the flavors and it was beautiful, right? The lemongrass. And we took the sweet potatoes and we took the... Yeah, sweet potatoes. They're both sweet potatoes, not nami. And uh, we, we marinated them. So they sat in there for over 24 hours now. So now we're going to have some fun with that. Okay? Now, one of the great things about the Virgin Islands is our agriculture scene in St. Croix, to me, is by far the best in the Caribbean. And, I, and that's a bold statement to say, but as a chef, I've traveled to Puerto Rico, and I've hung with the best chefs in Puerto Rico, and they're trying to figure out how I get my ingredients. Because to me, it's all about those relationships. When you realize when I'm at Art Farm and I'm talking to Luca, he's more concerned about telling me things about what his father eats. And that's when I realized you could actually eat the bottom of the romaine head. And the bottom, the root of the romaine, is more delicious than the lettuce. To me, when I look at romaine, the lettuce is the bipartisan product. Because when you roast that, it's so beautiful. Cool? So we're gonna get this curry leaves up in here, right? It's gonna like pop up and down on me and it's gonna look a little crazy. I'm gonna jump, so I just know that's gonna happen. Oh boy. Wish me luck, Asha. <laughs> Behave. Oh. Y'all smell that? <laughs> Instant. Instant. Awesome. So we got that in there, right? Boom. Anybody knows what Ben is? All right. So one of the mistakes I made is um, it's not sesame. It's Ben. Ben is similar to sesame, but it comes from the South. You know? And as I am a part of American cuisine, to me, I do let a lot into what the South comes. When I was young and I, I was able to afford and travel, and I, I, didn't go to, I didn't go to Europe. I had no interest. I came to America. I wanted to learn about shrimp and grits. I wanted to learn about Charleston. 
uh, New Orleans. I was so excited to learn about Mardi Gras Indians. You guys should look that up. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Cool. Let's get these potatoes in here now. If you guys don't realize, I would talk about history all day long. <laughs> cool. So we're going to take these sweet potatoes. Inside right here, I microplane some garlic, right? I have some cilantro. I have some coconut oil. I have the curry leaves. So now we're going to take these bad boys. We're just going to drop them in there, right? While they're acting up. They have water, so you want to, like, you know, play with it a little bit. Behave. Don't, don't put too much oil in there. It's going to come over, as you guys know, right? Boom. And we're going to fry those up so they can get nice and crispy. We're going to take the bent seeds and have them in there. I'm going to use the heat that we're frying with to bring this dish together. So now you have that to those toasty seeds, right? That's going to be great flavor. You have all the herbs. Herbs are so important. You know, to me, when I think about what is West Indian food, it's two things I think about. It's pepper and it's acid. Wherever you go in the Caribbean, you find ahi dulces, you find habaneros, scotch bonnets. Like, the varietals that we have out there is extreme. And then you think about acid, the lemon. You know, when the, when the Dutch came to St. Croix for the first time, they were passing St. John, and they would, and they, they would, they would say, limes ashore, limes ashore, through the accent that became asha. Asha is preserved lemons and cardamom. There's a correlation there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so they're getting nice and crispy. You guys see that, right? We're going to throw that in there with the Ben seeds. We're going to move that around. I'm going to use the residual heat. It's going to pick up all those flavors. I really want to eat this right now. Let's get some salt. Oh, man, you smelling that? You smell that? It smells good, bro. We got some limes, right? And one of my big things is when I cook, I don't measure a lot. I cook from here. I went to pastry school. I went to Johnson Woods. I studied pastries. And uh, some of the kids thought I was, it was weird seeing me do um, actual pastries without measuring. I cook from my heart. And it's, I don't say everyone should do that, but it works for me, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> One of my big things is, if you notice I'm not wearing a French a chef jacket, is I'm an American chef, I'm from the West Indies, and I embrace that in who I am. Oh, oh. awesome. So now we got this beautiful thing. Y'all see that? Let's look at that. Uh, look at that, get a little closer. Where you at? There we go. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> okay. So now we got all these beautiful things. We need to bring them together, okay? Real quick, everybody know lemongrass? For me, when I came to America, this was the most difficult thing for me to understand. It's like, why are you guys using the roots? Because in where I'm from, we drink bush tea. And everybody has lemongrass where I'm from. And mom will always send you outside every day. You'll pick some lemongrass, you pick some sour sap leaves, and you relax, and guess what? And, and honestly, if most people, when you drink that, it actually puts you to sleep. So if I wasn't behaving right, my mom would put some milk in there, and I'd put my butt to bed, you know? <laughs> So it's all about lemongrass, but I love the leaves. I love, love, love the leaves. So boom. And we use that a lot in all the food. And just as a heads up, at the marketplace tomorrow, I'm serving this dish with another dish, which is pretty cool. So this is a heads up. It's going to be oxtail cooked in red wine and tamarind juice only. And then we shred that, and we make it a smoked lobster and snapper sausage with raisin relish, and it's cooked together with a mofongo. You know? OK, cool. So let's put this food together now. We got a beautiful plate. Cool. And now let's plate this bad boy up. <laughs> Boom. I want to get a little harissa on the plate because I want you to feel that spice. I want for some point, but I don't want a lot. I just want to put a little bit there. When it comes to plating, one thing that's important to me is being honest. Uh, my mentor, Brandon McGlamory, always told me food should feel like it fell from the earth or it grew from the sky. I'm not trying to sit there, like I have tweezers and I try to place things pretty and I, I like that, but I don't sit down all day. To me, what's most important is how do you eat the food? After you took five bites, how is the plate? Because it could change drastically, that it might, your dish might turn awkward. You might mix something that turns bitter. All these things is what comes together to make a beautiful dish. Alrighty, oh my spoon. You got the big spoon? It went, it, went, it went back over there in the spoon. Oh, no, it's here. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. So we got this nice sauce. See how nice and thick it is, right? Very nice and mellow. The flavors that you're going to get in here is very uh, lemongrassy. And I'll pass this around to you guys, too, so you guys can check it out. It's not hot. Let's get that on there. I found it here. 
<laughs> While you're plating, could you tell us what, um, a little bit about what you were saying with your collaboration with the Monterey Bay Aquarium? Oh, awesome, yeah. So um, I work a lot with the James Beard House. I got a minute. Okay, cool. I'm going to go fast. So uh, they asked me to uh, work with them. And what we're doing right now is we're tracking what is sustainable food in the Caribbean. Because honestly, I know every single fisherman, I know where all my food comes from, but if they tell you the story, I'm not sustainable. So now we all need to sit down and figure it out. So what we've been working on is, uh, I've been going through like the last four months of all my bills, trying to figure out how much fish we get from where, where does this one come from, the cockles are forged, and now they're trying to rethink what is, how, how, what is sustainability in the Caribbean. So we're doing the numbers with NOAA, so to me that's really exciting that they're looking at us in the Caribbean for things like that right now, you know? You guys want to see that or pass it around? Yeah, yeah we got, got 32 seconds. We're going to make the most of it, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> it's not hot. Awesome. So that's looking pretty dope over there, right? Let's finish <laughs> it up. So we got these prawns. How was that prawn, bro? That's what I'm talking about, babe. Cool. So we're going to get them out. So you can see he cooked in the oil. We're going to take it right there. And let's let it be natural, yo. I'm not, I'm not fidgeting it. It's all about this flavor in here, man. Look at that. So now, my first thing, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest, I made this sonata oil so I could put it on top of that, right? That don't make any sense to me right now. I'm pulling it right out of here. I got coconut, I got shrimp heads because the heads were up, the flavors went down. I'm sorry I'm going over a minute, I'm gonna finish this up really quick. We got that up right there, right? Nice oil, because when you eat that, when you put fat back on the plate, what that does is it allows everything to be a bit more palatable to me, you know what I'm saying? We got the spices, we got this right here. Uh, let's get this on. So we got those potatoes to give a little crunch to the dish. You've got two extra minutes. Oh you guys, I got two minutes, y'all. You're rich in time. Let's do something extra. <laughs> so we got that. Let me get that piece out there. Yeah. Oh. It's beautiful. Cool. Mm -hmm. I want to go straight on with some lime juice. Because remember I put that oil on there, right? Put in that little bit of lime juice. What did I just do? I just made a broken vinaigrette, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. And then boom, so let's get these on. Let's get some serranos on there. That way they get some bites of heat, you know, they surprise you, you eat in there and it's just like a nice little extra bite of heat. Because our food should be based on pepper and acid. I got this nice, we got beautiful tomatoes. As you guys know, tomatoes came from Central America. We were right there with them. We have beautiful tomatoes. Some of the best tomatoes I honestly ever had in my life though was from Haiti, I have to point that out though. So we took some beautiful bacon that was heavily smoked. And now we're gonna put some of this on there too. Nice little relish, or marmalade, sorry. Put that right there. We're gonna hide him under the prawn head. That way you don't see him and when you get him, you're like, oh, that's nice and sweet. Can I pass that around too? To me, smelling the food is more important sometimes than listening to me, you know? Because that's what's gonna give you guys the memories. It's those smells. So we got that going on there. Now we're just gonna finish it, you know? We got beautiful cilantro leaves. One of the big things, and uh, some of the students make fun of me, is I don't really use microwaves because I don't try to make things just to make it on a plate to look beautiful. I believe the plate's already beautiful, the ingredient's beautiful. If I give it care and love, then we're okay with that, you know? I'm gonna put that like right there, some nice cilantro, some chives, nice little onion bites. And boom. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, Beautiful. That's it? Incredible. Awesome. You guys have a great day. Any <laughs> questions? Ask me. Uh, How about a big round of applause for all of our speakers? Thank you so much. Thank you, Jody, as well. All right, you've got a short break, and then we'll see you all back here in 15 minutes.